I don't perceive that all Americans are just saying, just get out. I don't care what it is. Although there are many that, that feel that way, and certainly in the Democrat Party. But in, among Republicans, Republicans don't want us just to walk away unless we have achieved a measurable goal of success. Because they know that if we demoralize this military, it will take a generation to gain back its own internal confidence. Hasn't that already happened? No, I don't think it has yet. Uh, and I've been over there, and I've spent a lot of time talking to, of course, we have extraordinary numbers of our guard who have gone over there. In fact, too many and too often. That's another issue. I uh, hope we can get into that. But um, no, I, I think right now they're, they're still very much of the sense that we've invested a lot here. We have a lot at stake. You know, let us get this job done, but give us the resources to get it done. We're not going to solve this unilaterally. I don't think we ever had the capacity to do that. And one of the failures was, number one, we had a very clear military strategy of toppling Saddam Hussein, but we clearly did not have an understanding of what it was going to take. Or if we did, we ignored what it was going to take, and I think that may in turn be the case, uh, to really get a level of stability there. If anything, we under um, committed the resources that even the DOD chart said we would have to have in order to see stability. They were estimating over 300,000 troops. We never put more than 180,000 there. Um, so rather than we did too much, we may have done too little early on, and now we're having to do more than we should be doing at this stage. If we don't engage the other partners of that region, the Saudis, the Jordanians, uh, the Turks, uh, the Kuwaitis, for that matter, the Iranians. Every single nation in that region has something to lose if Iran goes up in flames. And as I've often said, they're going to get scorched before we do. Their house is next door to the fire. And so it's critical to them as much as it is, if not more, to us that something happens that brings some level of stability. Now, one of the, I think, areas of naivete on the part of the United States was thinking that their democracy was going to look a lot like ours. That's unrealistic. It's not it's going to look much less like our version of democracy than we probably uh, think or would like, but it's a completely different culture, and uh, they've not had generations of people who have grown up with self-governance. And so it's probably going to have to, we're going to have to settle for something that'll look um, quite different. But I always say, you know, we've been a democracy for 200 40 years ourselves, and we're still working to get it right. I don't know. We've figured it out exactly. We, we struggled with it. My gosh, it took um, African Americans over a, uh, 100 years to be declared human beings and women 150 years to get the right to vote. We don't have this pristine record ourselves of, uh, of a perfect version of it. So uh, I think for these unrealist, ex unrealistic expectations that we're going to have this magnificent uh, Thomas Jefferson-like democracy in Iraq uh, in two years? No, of course not.